Hey everybody, welcome to Game Day View presented by Mercedes-Benz. The gang is back together. Patrick Claybon back again with Greg Rosenthal and Cynthia Freeland who have been traveling the globe these past couple of weeks. Good to have you guys back. It is great to be back and talking Love is Blind recaps before I know. the show starts. Let's go. <laughs> We've covered the entire Lachey-verse. We're going to cover all of the Week 8 games, but we have to look back at week seven, oh, Colleen, weeks? I don't want it. Colleen stepped in for Cynthia, and she won it for the Good second job. week in a row. Our guest has beat us in the picks. Colleen gets crowned, <laughs> and she was kind enough to send a message after her big week. Hello, friends. I just wanted to say thank you so much for having me on last week. I am positively exhausted from just being correct so many times. So I've decided to not come into work today. I'm taking the day off. You guys should really try it sometime. Um, I will await my return invitation. It still has not arrived yet. <laughs> so I'm sure that's coming any day now. And last thing, Greg, I'm sure you have some really cool shoes on, but again, we can't see them. Bye guys. <laughs> Sufficiently. What roasted. is that? Is that a dare? Look, there you we can go. see him. There we go. He got the lean back this time. <laughs> no standing up to reveal the shoes. All right, Colleen, the, the invitation is yeah. standing. It's we open. have another chair. Yeah. We can add another chair. It's, it's over there. It's like, literally over there. Yeah, we can, we can go get it. <laughs> we're we're going to hold you to that. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about some games. Uh, not sure if you guys, you guys have heard, but after starting 5-0, and the 49ers have lost their last two in week six. Jake Moody missed that potential game-winning 41-yard field goal, or 41 yard field goal against the Browns. Then Monday and Mini. Brock Purdy threw two late interceptions that sealed the game. The Niners now play host to the Bengals. Brock Purdy was a full participant in practice Friday. Kyle Shanahan says he's on track to pass the league's concussion protocol. If he passes, he will start Sunday. How do you feel about this game, Greg? I feel like the 49ers will win no matter who's that quarterback. Ooh. If I think Sam Darnold can beat him, you know Brock Purdy can beat him, and it's because Christian McCaffrey can beat him. This Bengals run defense has been disappointing this year. And I think when a team like the 49ers, who has Super Bowl aspirations, has a you know a mid-game or mid-season losing streak, they go back to what they do best. That's running the ball, outside zone, power, all of it. And this Bengals run defense has been giving up yards all season. They're great in the red zone, but they let teams go down the field. They just haven't been as physical as they have in the past. And I think this 49ers uh, running attack and their offensive line, they're built to run block. They're not really built to protect the passer. And we know Purdy's coming off of an injury, so I think McCaffrey gets it done on the ground. Uh, oh, I'll go here because I'm also as confident mm. as Greg is in the 49ers, but not – that confident because if Brock Purdy is not playing this game, I will not. I will be changing my pick really? uh, coming up uh, on this game if there is no Brock Purdy. But I have 25-24 because the 49ers offense wouldn't just potentially be missing their starting quarterback. But Debo Samuel most likely out this week, going to wait until after the bye to come back. And so that means Jawan Jennings is the person who comes in, sees most of the snaps uh, go up without Debo Samuel. He's not asked to do all the Debo things because nobody is. Uh, if there's no Brock Purdy, I I'm not comfortable here, but Brock Purdy plays. Uh, I got the Niners in there. Okay, well, Bengals fans, please back me up on this one. I actually have, I'm a little surprised, Cincinnati winning 23-22. Yeah. to 22. Some things could change based on the final injury report, but part of that is to do with Trent Williams. Part of that to do is to do with Brock Purdy, and part of it is to do with Debo Samuel, as you talked about. When I'm looking at this pass rush from the Bengals, we haven't seen Hendrickson and Hubbard be the duo that they were last year, as in the one that had the most pressures as a duo in the league. However without Trent Williams, or even if he's not 100%, and with no Debo Samuel, things are different. We've only seen Brock Purdy under center, obviously, so Brock Purdy's passer rating, Brock Purdy's completion percentage, everything goes down when there's no Debo Samuel. Mm. And also, then no Trent Williams. On top of that, I think the pass rush will be able to get home a little bit more often. I'm a little worried. Whenever the model goes for a big underdog. I, sometimes I, I'm very – I was a little – I looked at it. I looked at it again. I – Yes, that's just what it says. I'm know? also confused about the Sam Darnold hive that shows up every time he like almost plays or plays. It's like, give it up, guys. They're dwindling. It's over. You, you know, I know you had him number one overall before the draft, but it's over. There's there's a few uh, still remaining. And, uh, the this Bengals, is the best situation for him, though. The Bengals have been heating up. Uh, the Jags also have been on fire. They've won four straight games. A big reason why, Travis Etienne. ETN under center, but they toss it to the left. ETN, he's got some running room 15, 10, 5, toward the pylon, touchdown! Travis ETN scores again, and he's 
the first player now in Jaguars history to have two rushing touchdowns in three consecutive games. Raiders fans, avert your eyes. We're going to have you a field goal coming up here that would have changed the number one overall pick a few years ago. But either way, uh, let's look to the Jags going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jacksonville 5-2 and two starting. It's their best start since 2007. What do you see taking place in this matchup, Cynthia? Um, I actually think that this is a very close game, but I have Jacksonville pulling off the win 22-21. to 21. When I'm looking at this game, to me, it's both quarterbacks' ability to, or I guess offenses' ability, to execute play-action passes. We've seen when the Jags are really their best, play-action works really, really well for them. And Travis Etienne coming on so strong will help play-action be more convincing to try to trick the defense. Now, on on the other side, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they've used play action like less than five times this mm. season. However, they used it against the Rams last week, and that was in part what really got them going. So if for some reason the team who was able to pull off play action is probably the team that wins for me in this one, and I have the Jags edging out the Steelers in that regard. Yeah, the Steelers team worries me because they're 4-2 and two and they haven't played their best. You figure they'll actually get better at some point, but I'm not trusting it until I see it. I'm going Jaguars 24-21 because they have the better quarterback in this game. And when I watch Trevor Lawrence, one of the things that impresses me the most is how he just does normal stuff. Like, <laughs> he just plays quarterback a lot of times like he's Brock Purdy or Mac Jones. It's kind of like when, when <laughs> Cynthia doesn't wear her glasses. Like, she can be a superhero if she wants, but she doesn't even need to. Like, Trevor Lawrence is big and strong and has a huge arm, but he makes these great decisions just getting rid of the ball quickly. He did that against the Saints because his knee was hurt, and so he takes what the defense gives him, and then when he has to, he puts those glasses on like Cynthia and looks extra smart. It, I don't know if that analogy makes any sense, uh, but he doesn't even need to be great all yeah. the time to win. <laughs> the ultimate point is whether the the glasses are on or off. It's still Superman. Yeah. It's still Cynthia. <laughs> it's still Trevor Lawrence. And the aspect that a whole bunch of people are coming in this game asking questions about, Calvin really only had one catch the last time out. And I think a lot of it goes to what Greg was talking about, about taking what the defense gives them. The Jags are on this win streak. And Calvin Ridley's been getting played with so much press in the past few weeks, a lot of press coverage. And the Jags are okay with that because – that gets to dictate the coverage and the way things are going on the other side of the field with the safeties and the way that the defense is presenting itself uh, to, to coach and, and to coach and to Calvin Ridley. They're comfortable with that, but when it is a third and six, when it's a third and eight, Trevor Lawrence is going to look uh, for Calvin Ridley. And go ahead, Mimas, uh, although – you know, I'm sure it's Steelers fans. Look at those scores, though. No matter what, yeah. the it's Steelers the are scoring 21 points in this game. I guarantee it. Yes. 100%. Greg and I are score twins. Again, we've been doing that a lot uh, here recently. Last week it didn't work <laughs> out in terms of wins as we move on. Uh, last time we saw the Cowboys two weeks ago in primetime, Dallas's defense stepped up when they needed it most against the Chargers. Herbert back. Pressure coming again. Throws it out. Intercepted. Gilmore jumped in at the Los Angeles 32. From bad to worse, game over. Intended for Quentin Johnston. And off. The 4-2 and two Cowboys fresh off the bye playing host to the 3-4 and four Rams. Dallas 2-0 and oh at home this season. Is it 3-0, and oh, Greg? It is, but it's going to be a lot closer than that six and a half points that you look at. I have a one-point win for the Cowboys at home, so I think the Rams keep this close. I think these are even. I would take the Rams if they were at home, but only one of these teams has Dak Prescott, and Dak Prescott's coming off what I thought was his best game of the year, and I like to watch Dak Prescott play great football. It just makes me happy, and when he was <laughs> using his legs in this game against the Chargers, I thought, thank you, Dak. Like, you have this ability to run the ball and to run before throwing the ball, buy some time in the pocket and make plays. Like, he used to be a much more creative player when the play broke down, and I think that can unlock uh, the Dak that we used to see. Because he's been a little bit of the Dak coaster this year. One great week, one poor week, and then he's coming off a great week. I think this is a good matchup for him against a Rams defense that's been playing well, but maybe overachieved. But he had a bye, so, like, are we back on the bad week or good? You know I'm what I'm saying? saying? Like, we're I'm on the roller coaster, are we? cast that he's now going to just play better. Well, I want you to be happy, so I actually am also going to pick the Cowboys as well. <laughs> 25 to 20, not six and a half yet again. And I want to talk about C.D. Lamb, who obviously is the target of choice for Dak Prescott. But when looking at the areas of the Rams' defense where I have some questions, it's not up front with Aaron Donald. No questions there. 
but I don't know exactly what's going on in that second and third level of the defense. And I think C.D. Lamb's ability to mm. just outrun, outsmart, and kind of create separation, even when it doesn't look like separation is a good thing that's going to happen for him, somehow he finds a way to be open. C.D. Lamb, especially in the slot, I just think this is too much for the Rams to overcome. I agree on a couple of parts. One, I, I want Greg to be happy as well. Just Thank in you. Because Thank you. we love Greg. Uh, it, but it is, it's not, it, it's independent of the game. I think the Cowboys uh, win the game as well. I also don't think um, the, the six and a half points is something that's going to happen. I've got a three point win uh, by the Dallas Cowboys. And it's a lot of the same reason where I almost picked the Pittsburgh Steelers to win in SoFi last week. And that's trouble when this Rams offense goes up against a team that has talent on the edges. And you want to talk about a team that has talent on the edge, Demarcus Lawrence, as well as Micah Parsons. This pass rush, I think, uh, is the game deciding makes the game deciding play here and the Cowboys win by three after that loss in the closing moments uh, to Pittsburgh it was yet again uh, the issue for the Rams so I've got Dallas here so again meme us away and uh, meme take the picture now like don't don't do it <laughs> wait I'm gonna be thumbs up at least up the Rams it. have a new kicker yeah. You know, that makes Take sense. Take it with like this. There yeah. you go. Make Cynthia the picture. We got uh, Kirk Cousins and the Vikings knocking off the 49ers last week. But can they keep momentum rolling into Green Bay? Our picks for oh, the God. NFC North Showdown are coming up next. Claybon going momentum. Minshew, play fake. Under pressure. There's the pressure. Sack. Ball out. Fight for it at the 35. Brown. Football. Miles Garrett with the strip sack. Gay's got to try it from 60. It's blocked. Miles Garrett blocked it. He jumped right over the oh, center. Man. He went Superman. What a play by Miles Garrett. He stands three yards deep in the end zone. Under pressure for Miles. Ball out. Fight for it to the end zone. Miles got home again. Who's got it? Browns do. Touchdown. Miles Garrett forces his second turnover of the game. It's time for the drive to excellence presented by Mercedes Benz and Miles Garrett has certainly been excellent this season as the Browns head to Seattle on a two game winning streak. Deshaun Watson is out. PJ Walker mm. will start. How do you see this game going, Greg? Well, I got to admit, I'm a little frightened after watching that Miles Garrett tape, but I'm going to channel <laughs> my inner Gino and I'm just going to go for the impossible 23 14 Seahawks over the Browns because Gino doesn't care. He can see a receiver well covered, and he's going to throw the ball anyways. Just watch this pass he had last week to Noah Fant and so basically, like, quadruple coverage. There is no, <laughs> like, hole that Gino cannot throw a ball into. It, I am a little worried because his best throws, I think, over the last two weeks are better than any quarterback in the entire NFL. He's had, like, eight or nine. He's almost on such a heater that he's trying things that are maybe over his skis in the red zone, and they've been struggling in the red zone this year, and so that is a problem, but I think P.J. Walker has not really played well, and the Seahawks defense is playing well. So two great defenses in this game, right only back, one though. good quarterback. Gino says he doesn't write back. Cynthia? Thanks, Gino. <laughs> Wait, Gino doesn't write back? Yeah, okay. he doesn't write back. Got it. Um, I have Gino winning as well. A little bit closer game for me in this matchup. I have, what is it, 24 to 20 is where I net out in this one. But I want to talk about Amari Cooper because I feel like because of the quarterback situation, we kind of don't give him enough love for what he's been able to do considering the questions at quarterback. This guy is top five in the league in terms of air yards per target, and he's coming down with these, like, ridiculous catches on ball that maybe shouldn't that was a, a dime right there but you know maybe not necessarily should be caught and tons of that looked like a hold there I don't, I don't even know go to jail for that but break but ultimately I look at Amari Cooper and I think you know that does change a defense and there are some areas to exploit in that secondary not Devin Witherspoon because he's my rookie of the year candidate mm. but defensive rookie of the year candidate but the other side yeah, they're playing so well right now. Again, the, the quarterback situation highlights uh, those things. As, as much as I believe in P.J. Walker as a backup quarterback, I don't believe uh, in him on the road against Geno and company. But I do want to look at one of Geno's uh, wide receivers. I love your score. It was, it was a slow start. <laughs> you know, I, I, I like numbers. I like to try to use all the numbers. I don't want too many of the same. Uh, because at the start of the season, Jackson Smith and Jigba was running a bunch of screens like that. And it's like, well, when is this guy going to get down the field? Well, 11 of his last 13 targets in these past couple of weeks have been down the field. Mm. Uh, he's getting more air yards per target now, more of a part of the Seahawks offense. And I think he's in, uh, in a spot for a solid game against the Cleveland Browns. So meme away again. Uh, we've all got 
Thank you to you beautiful children. <laughs> uh, moving on here, there were plenty of upsets last week. One of the biggest belonged to the Vikings who took down the mighty 49ers on Monday night. The Vikings have had plenty of opportunities to put this game out of reach, but it's going to have to come down to our defense. Purdy back to pass him, and he needs to sack him. He loops it over the middle. Intercepted! Yes! The Vikings beat the Niners, and Cam Bynum has a two-interception night. Bynum played that beautifully. The surging Vikings <laughs> heading to Lambeau to face off against the slumping Packers and Kirk Cousins. Cynthia got another primetime win that people will memory hold and be like, Kirk doesn't win in primetime. Do you see the Vikings keeping this up? <laughs> do think I do. Listen, he's not playing on Monday, guys, so you better be careful. But Kirk Cousins win this one in actually closer than maybe expected. 23-21 is my score. I want to talk about Jordan Addison. Obviously, without Justin Jefferson, the offense has to change. That is the best receiver right now in the NFL, and when he's not there, things just have to change. But they really hit on Jordan Addison really well. They're drafting what they want him to do and what he's able to do, especially with tempo. And the tempo is what really got them going last week against the Niners. He, Addison just gets it. He's, he's really evolving faster than maybe other people expected. And then taking over that number one role, I think that this is going to be a mismatch for Green Bay's defense despite Green Bay having a good defense. I just think hmm. what they're able to – and tempo. It's the tempo. Tempo for me. Yeah, and earlier in the season we were looking at this Minnesota Vikings defense. It was like, oh, free food. Everybody enjoy. It's like Halloween. Somebody leaves the bowl out and everybody <laughs> just takes as much as they possibly can. That's not the Vikings defense anymore. <laughs> Brian Flores' group has figured these things out in the last four games. They're giving up less than 20 points per game. And, again, we showed the game-ending interceptions. Shout out to Cam Bynum who had two picks, playing so well. He was one of these young guys coming into the secondary a couple of years ago. They were trying to figure things out on the run. He's figured things out. And now, you know, he's, he's making plays. His wife is stuck in the Philippines. They, they can't get her visa approved. Whoa. He, he's making so many plays. Like, let's get her over here so she can watch a game uh, in person. I, I think the Vikings take this one, Greg. Should I leave the bowl out, like, while we're trick-or-treating? Is that the yeah. move? Okay. Yeah, no, the because then know. people, like, leave. The, and they, the kids, they, they, and they, they just take them. They you should get a ring them. camera and do it, and you'll see like who the kids are really taking lots of. <laughs> you know who hasn't been taking anything? The, the Packers defense this year. <laughs> yeah. They've been driving me crazy. And I'm going to pick them to win this game anyways. So I don't care. So 21-20, I'm picking the Packers. I'll get to why in a little bit. But I just want to point out, you're talking Cam Bynum and who's on the Vikings defense. The Packers defense has better players. There are stars on this defense. We have Jair Alexander. We have Razul Douglas. We've got uh, Rashad Gary. You know who has a higher <laughs> uh, pass rush? Win rate than Rashawn Gary ever? No, no one from the, this. Season. I know he hasn't like played all of the right. Snaps, so but when you play like five snaps, so no, just don't he's worry been about playing a lot details. more lately. He has been the most effective. <laughs> Kenny Clark. There's another one. There are stars on this team. Can we play better? Uh, but the reason I, I, I really picked the Packers here, 21 to 20, is I. I listened to a Vikings podcast, and the titles of their podcast have gone from should we trade everyone on the roster to could the Vikings win the NFC in the last couple of weeks? And that means they're going to lose this game because, like, Vikings fans can't have nice things. You think Greg's on a powerful podcast. I think uh, maybe that Vikings podcast is the most powerful podcast in the world. I right, can't wait to see. How things turn out. Uh, don't look now, folks. The Jets. Hello. There's a ghost. Right, they've won two straight. They're in the playoff. Did you just see a ghost? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Ghost. Got it. In MetLife, they got a huge matchup with two teams that play there. It's against the G-Men. The battle for New Jersey. Next. <laughs> Back to throw is Hurts. Looks left. Throws left. It's intercepted. Picked off. Running right. Tony Adams. He's inside the 25. Breaks a tackle. Down to the 10 yard line. Unbelievable. Hand off Hall. Up the middle. They're going to let him score. It's the Jets 20 and the Eagles 14. The Jets can go to victory formation if they can get a stop on down. Oh, here we go. Well protected. Looks left. Heaves a bomb down the middle of the field. It is broken up by Jordan Whitehead. The Jets are going to win it. What a day for the Jets defense. Bob Sala's team has won two in a row. They're coming off of the bye to face the Giants at MetLife. Daniel Jones is out, so Terod Taylor will start again. This tie God being back make you pick the Giants. It, it does. You know me well. Giants 20, <laughs> Jets 16. I mean, there's no – it's just Danny now. It's not Danny Dimes because <laughs> Ty God took all the dimes. Watch these throws. Over the last few weeks, 
He's made the Giants look like they actually have playmakers. It's kind of nice. Wandell Robinson, Darren Waller, Darius Slayton. They all suddenly look like much better players because they've got a better quarterback throwing them the ball. I'm not going to crush Daniel Jones for that contract. Like, if they're going to pay it to him, yeah. he, should, he should take it. Take the money. But he's no longer the guy who takes any chances. And I think Tyrod Taylor has shown the last couple of weeks he can still make good decisions and make good throws. And uh, you mentioned Zach Wilson uh, seeing ghosts, and I think he could struggle a little bit with a Don Mark, uh, Martindale defense this weekend. Well, it's all blitzing, right? We know blitz is coming. Um, when I'm looking at this game, I think that the Jets get their first Robert Sala post by win. I think that's mm. that correctly. 20 to 18, by the way, the other two, there's only been, this is the third time we're against the Patriots. But long story short here, it's Brees Hall. Why? Because the opportunity to run against the Giants defense is 29th, right? So 29th EPA run defense for the Giants. And Brees Hall is really coming on strong. I also think that their O-line has the right schemes and concepts to create the necessary lanes for Hall. So I'm looking at Brees Hall, and I'm saying it doesn't matter what anyone who could potentially be quarterbacking mm. for the green team sees because Brees Hall will be the back of Brees Hall is what they're all going to be saying. Giants defense, they've looked kind of normal the last two weeks, I'm just saying. But Brees Hall is not normal. He's averaging no, 6.5 no, yeah. yards per carry. The NFL record is 6.1. So if he were to maintain this level or even a little bit less, he would break the record. And that's coming back week after week after week. They've had the bye, so we get a a presumably fresh uh, Brees Hall in this game. I'm looking on the Jets' defense. I've got uh, the Jets winning as well, 16-17. Mm. Close game. I, Jets, I, Greg. Don't know, don't know about, you know, three points. Yeah, give us a, give us a shot. Here we go. I mean, that's <laughs> picking big blue is going to make me feel like just that. Just Greg. Uh, on the Giants, but I want to talk about a defender. Let's let's show everybody a little C.J. Mosley and the way that he's been playing in the middle of Robert Sala's defense. In the past three games, he's had three pass breakups, two turnovers, one interception, one forced fumble. C.J. Mosley everywhere, a part of the reason this Jets defense is so good. Um, and that's why I'm taking the Jets in, in a very, uh, one of my lowest scoring games of the week. Let's uh, get to... That's enough low scoring games. Let's talk about some of these score fests. The highest over unders in week eight. Man, that's low for the highest over unders. Yeah, though. there's like no 50s this there's week. There's also no scoring in the NFL. Let's go. Let's go, teams. Def it's, zone, it's just that the defense offenses. has gotten better. It's that the defenses have gotten better. Well, sure. But and there's young quarterbacks and like play points. callers. I'm basic. Well, let's, let's, get some, let's get some points, and let's get some quick picks presented by Zillow. The Raiders-Lions matchup Monday night has one of the highest over-unders of the week. Cynthia, Ugh. are you expecting fireworks from the Lions? I'm going to be honest, this is the one game where I'm kind of like, I wish they would have sent me there for work. It's not even necessarily the best oh. game on paper, but I just want to be in Detroit, Michigan on a Monday night with a game. Oh, oh so special. <laughs> Ferocious. Yeah, I'm picking them. I, I have 29 to 7. Patrick and I put up there for you. <laughs> We don't feel great about the Raiders. <laughs> I think Jared Goff will go back to his form in throwing deep passes. Last week they got extremely unbalanced. This is a team that's very close to 50-50 run and pass. And now in this matchup, they're not going to probably be faced with four perfect drives to start the game yeah. by the opposing offense, which was ridiculous by the Ravens. Hats off to them. But I think we kind of see the Lions go back to a good offense yet again. All right, Patriots and Dolphins, Greg, congratulations on the Pats' one-game win streak. Uh, any chance they pull off an upset in Miami? Uh, no. Actually, yes, there's a chance. I'm going to say they chance. keep it closer than the 9.5 points that's up there, but i go 30 to 26. <laughs> I feel bad for uh, J.C. Jackson. I like hearing those Dolphins out there. J.C. Jackson was with the Chargers week one, and he was just getting barbecued by Tyreek Hill, and that's not funny. He's coming off a major injury, and he thinks, well, at least – that's done for the year. Oh, no, I'm going to get traded to the Patriots. And because they don't have anyone else, I'm going to be their number one cornerback basically every week. And he's done a solid job. But it's a downgrade from Kristen Gonzalez, who was guarding Tyree Kill back in week two when the Patriots defense did okay against Miami. Ultimately, I think the Patriots keep this closer than Dolphins fans would like, but Miami gets the win. All right, let's go to Atlanta, Tennessee. Ryan Tannehill has been ruled out, so Will Levis and Malik Willis are expected to play, according to head coach Mike Vrabel. I will take the Falcons 19-17 to in this one, and it's purely because of the way that they've played in the past couple of weeks. And you're thinking, well, Patrick, you know, these games have been close. They've barely been winning. That's because they get to the red zone, and they've been turning the ball over. It, it happened against the Commanders. It definitely happened a ton 
against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, three of them in the red zone. It's just, this is what it takes for the Falcons to lose. I just don't think this could continue to happen over and over again. I don't feel good about this. All but three no. of the Falcons. Just, they're the hardest team to pick in the NFL. I don't right know. Now. You said it yourself. Maybe they use both quarterbacks and when they pretend they have the ball yeah. and nobody knows and the defense gets all confused and yep. Derrick Henry runs away. Wait, we're writing this, guy, this game script right here tonight. Willeek Wivis is going to get the start, <laughs> and he's going to be incredible. Coming up, it's a Hollywood script in the making. Undrafted rookie quarterback Tyson Bajan taking on big bad Justin Herbert in La La Land. Is anyone bold enough to take the Bears? You can find out next. Hey everyone, Scott Hansen here, and this is NFL Plus, where you can catch every play all in one place. You get access to live, local, and primetime games on your mobile phone and tablet. That's every in-market game with you on the go. I never knew that was a thing. Oh, yeah? And here's my favorite part. You can stream NFL Red Zone live every Sunday. What are you waiting for? Game time, baby. Let's go. Go to plus.nfl.com. Sign up today. Thanks, Scott. It's time for Pizza Pizza pregame predictions delivered by Little Caesars. The 3-4 and four Saints taking on the 3-4 and four Colts in Indy. Both teams on two-game losing streaks. Which team is going to get things right on Sunday, Cynthia? I, I guess I have the Colts getting things right, 24-22. to 22. I don't feel great about this one. Why? Because I don't necessarily think that some of the tricks that we've been seeing in the red area are sustainable. Mm. But the data is what the data is. And we'll see with your very eyes right here, Gardner Minshew rushing for not just one, but two touchdowns against the Cleveland Browns defense. Now, I, it's it's kind of wild. This season is like the historically bad in the red area conversion rate. But the Colts are actually a bright spot in that regard. And when you're looking at things that are Really indicative of who wins game. Oh, look at that shit. I mean, yeah, He's give me that the- Antoine Walker shimmy. I love it. I'm going to be, he does have swagger. Like, if you could do a swagger meter, he's like, like, he's wild. Like, I also saw him in person. He's like, much stronger than I thought. Anyways, but <laughs> long, long story short, it's the red area ability for the Colts that really mm. changed the, I, I, it's, it's surprising. I, I have learned quarterbacks are always bigger in person than they appear. But, like, he's, like, screen. jacked. Like, I'm not like surprised, you. and I'm going to be more confident in picking the Colts. I mean, you're kind of hemming and hawing. I don't, I don't I'm love Gardner it. Minshew. <laughs> I, I'm I can't put my arms down. <laughs> you know who is Jack, by the way? Jonathan Taylor. 23-18, the Colts are going to win this game on the backs <laughs> of Jonathan Taylor and Zach Moss. But we've talked about Zach Moss enough this year, and Jonathan Taylor is better. Wow, Zach Moss being like a 1B behind one of the best running backs in the league. I saw all I needed to see last week against the Browns. The burst is back. The receiving ability is back. The vibes are back. This is a fun three and four team. That's why I'm picking them. That's why I feel confident because you know where the vibes are terrible? New Orleans. If you can't have fun as a team in New Orleans, you got something wrong with you. And this team, they just like, it's terrible (laughs) vibes. It's a lot of bickering. It's It's, coaches. It's media. It's everything. And the vibes are bad, Greg. But do you know why the vibes are bad? they lose. Because they have a good football team. They have a talented football team. And they've put the players in position to be successful. But something isn't quite right. Let's go back uh, to the end of the first half. There's an Alvin Kamara check down. Chris Olave is upset with uh, with Derek Carr. Why? Because he's running downfield by himself. It actually happened twice. And And there's no pressure either. Come on. And and so these things have – they, they got to a boiling point, and, and there's Twitter discussion. Everybody's going back. Michael Thomas is tweeting at people. The, th- the reason things are like this is because the team is good. Stay off Twitter. And people are disappointed about the results. But I do believe, because if you tell me in week one, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick the Colts uh, with Gardner Minshew playing against the Saints. No, I, I'm not going to do that. I've got the Saints winning 23-21 uh, to 21 on the road, and I, I don't mind. I, I don't mind Stray being Stray Bond. Uh, here on a team that I believe in because I like talent. Last week, undrafted rookie quarterback Tyson Bajant led the Bears to their first win at Soldier Field in over a year. 30-12 to victory against the Raiders. Check out the scene in the locker room after he got his first career. <laughs> in his first start. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had my back from the jump, man. You know, we had adversity last week, Justin going down. And, you know, right from the get, y'all had my back. So I couldn't appreciate y'all anymore. Couldn't have did that without y'all today. And glad we go out there and get a good one. 
they, they had his back from the from the jump. Of, of course, Greg Rosenthal has had my back from the jump. So, Greg, I have to start with you. Uh, Justin Fields is out. Bajant gets his second start. Do you have his back? I do, because they are huge underdogs in this game. What is what is the problem here? Eight and a half point underdogs. I'd say the Chargers only win by a point. <laughs> so, I think Tyson Bajant showed me something last week. He looked like a guy who's still going to be in the NFL eight or nine years from now. Now, he had the lowest average depth of char- target or second lowest average depth of target for a winning quarterback in the last 10 years. But again, the vibes, they're good. The decision making, it's good. As backup quarterbacks in Chicago go, to me, he's more Chase Daniel and less Craig Krenzel. So that's an old pull. If, if you remember, Craig Krenzel, it, was, it wasn't great back in the day. I think he's going to keep this close because I actually asked the research department, Next Gen Stats, and they've told me the Chargers in their history have never won a two-score game. So that, that's got to be it, 24-23. <laughs> well, they're, I guess nine points is a two-score game. It is. Yeah, it I, is. That's what I have, 27-18 oh. to 18 for the Chargers. I do, though, want to give some love to the Bears' run game and specifically the fact that Deontay Foreman last week was ridiculously efficient and effective, which helped – Bajan. And by the way, Patrick, I've had your back too. So, you know, oh, yeah. you know, I still do. Well, it's just, I'll start with Greg. <laughs> Thank you. But I want to talk about this run game and the fact that the Chargers run defense is always a question. So if Bajan's going to have some success, and I think they do have success to the tune of 18 points, I think it's going to be the fact that I mean, the run you game don't has. have Tyson Bajan's back. That's clear. 18, I didn't say I did. I said I have Patrick's points, back. Not covering I have eight and Patrick's, a half. Give me a break. I have Patrick's back, okay. not Tyson Bajan's. And Good I, for him. I'm happy for him, but I have Patrick's back. I appreciate having the lead in Cynthia support over Tyson Bajan, uh, <laughs> who I don't necessarily have the back of in this game. I, I hope things go well. Uh, also, 18 points for me, 25 <laughs> uh, to 18. I think the Chargers run game returns. Remember week one? Remember Austin Eckler going up against the Miami Dolphins? That was he fun. had. 18 carries, 100 yards on the ground. And it's like, yeah, okay, I see how Kellen Moore is going to incorporate this player into the offense. Well, he gets hurt. The Chargers go on a losing streak. I think this is the week where Eckler returns back, although uh, the Bears' defense has been a little bit of a different defense the past few weeks. They've definitely improved, but I see the Chargers winning this one 25-18. to 18. Uh, Coming up, the top two picks in the draft. Yes, me away. We didn't give you a lot of time. <laughs> Facing off Bryce Young against C.J. Stroud. Which team got it right? Who has the edge? Our picks for Texans Panthers next. With the first pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Bryce Young. He's heating up. Bryce Young threads a needle. What a strike. The Houston Texans select C.J. Stroud, quarterback, Ohio State. Down 31 yards, C.J. Stroud. The top two picks in the draft facing off in Charlotte. Bryce Young against C.J. Stroud. The Panthers still looking for their first win of the year. Does it come on Sunday, Greg? It doesn't. I think the game's going to be close, though. I'm going 26-24. I think it's going to be Bryce Young's best game. It's going to be his first game with the new play caller. Uh, Thomas Brown, and I want to take you back a couple weeks ago to the first half against Miami. I saw some high-level throws from Bryce Young, throwing it over the first level of the defense, over zone coverage. At one point in this game, he was 8 for 9 for 100 yards, making good decisions. I've actually seen steady progress. I think the last two games from Bryce Young have been very encouraging. This is not some disastrous rookie start that people are trying to make it out to be. His future is bright. Just remember, at this point uh, in Trevor Lawrence's rookie year, I thought Mac Jones was better than him. So the first six games of their career is not that important. C.J. Stroud's great. Bryce Young's going to be great, too. And this game's going to be fun to watch. Well, I agree with you on kind of all accounts. I think both are great. I do have Houston winning by a little bit more of a margin, 25 to 21 in this matchup. Not necessarily because I don't think Bryce Young's going to be good long term, but I think that Houston's defensive front is just a little better right now, especially on third down. If you're watching what they're able to do when you absolutely know Mm. that it's going to be a pass, that they're just not getting any they're not giving anything away. They're not giving any extra inches to op- opposing offenses, and they're just really causing a lot of problems. And you obviously expect that with this coaching tree and where D'Amico Ryans came from, but to see it happen this quickly and from a team that last year they had good pressure rate, this year it's even better. I just don't think that this is a great opportunity against an O-line that just there's so many, they have so many flags on that O-line, so mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think that gets better in this game.
Yeah, I, I agree with both of you guys. I also have a close game. Three and a half, it feels like a little bunch. I got a three-point win uh, for the Houston Texans <laughs> in this one. And it's something that we've been wanting to see since the start of the season. Yes, I need it. Damian Pierce running the ball well if it doesn't happen this week because the Panthers are dead last in design run defense, inside runs, outside runs, rushing from under center, overall rushing efficiency. Wow. The Carolina Panthers are number 32 in all of those stats. So if, if not now, I don't know what's going to happen, but look for a big Damian Pierce uh, game. And another win for the number two selection, as it's been a long time, 7-0 and in the last seven games <laughs> of the number two overall pick going up against the number one overall pick. Hmm. Little stat for you. Two is the new one, you know. Ryan Leaf beating Peyton Manning back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> for the first time ever, the NFL kicks off in Frankfurt, Germany, with Sunday morning football exclusively on NFL Network. A must-see AFC showdown as the Dolphins take on the Chiefs. You can rise, shine, and watch on Sunday, November 5th at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, only on NFL Network, and streaming as well on NFL+. Plus. It's time for us to get our foam fingers out because we're going to do some over and under. Speaking of the Chiefs, before the Chiefs head over to Germany, uh, they got a date with the Denver Broncos. The over under is 47 and a half, and I like points. Uh, so mm. give me the over. I got 50 in this one, 31 to 19, because Kansas City is playing a lot better uh, on offense right now. And, and don't sleep on the Broncos' capacity to score as well. I think we hit 50, right? Yeah, I think they're an uh, underrated offense in Denver, but it's partly because of the running game. I'm going under. No. I mean, it feels like it was just a couple weeks ago I was in my hotel room in London watching this game at 3 in the morning. Oh, wait, it was two weeks ago. Let's get it together, schedule makers. Two games in three weeks. I don't like it. I don't know why, but I think that leads to defense. Well, the other thing that leads to defense is the fact that the Kansas City Chiefs defense is really good this year. 28 to 17 is my final score, which adds up to 45, which is less. When I'm watching what they're able to do, like they're using base defense or using nickel, they're so balanced. And mm -hmm. and that's really a really nice success rate. So, I don't know. Not good things for Russell Wilson. I'm going to be like Sorry. the tweeters. I think you guys just don't like points. They're anti-points. So moving on Tweeters to have Eagles done great this year. at Commanders. Washington played Philly. Pretty close back in week four. The over-under is 43 and a half. And we just, I've just beaten it. I got 44 points uh, <laughs> in this one. A bounce back game for Jalen and company. Although I am a little bit worried about that knee. Nick Sirianni said it's fine. Jalen said it's fine. I'm going to need to see some evidence. But until then, I got 44 points in the over. Yeah, the last time these two teams played, they went over 60. And I, I'm basic. They went over 60 last time. Give me 43 and a half. The commander's offense has given this Eagles defense problems for years. I don't know what it is, but they bring out the best of them. And so I think Eric Bieniemy and company score plenty. Um, I have 27 to 18, which is 45, which is an over. I think it's very interesting. Washington could be in the market for their defensive front to be on the trade block, which means you're probably going to see some interesting things from both teams. Ooh. Very competitive game, higher scoring game than 43 and a half. Why, why would Ron Rivera trade anyone if he doesn't have any job security? Because, so. let's be fair, they don't have any money next year. They've got okay. a lot of things okay. to figure out. Okay. Well, we'll figure, we'll figure that out in the future. We'll figure out the Ravens and the Cardinals. Baltimore's offense went off against the Lions. The over-under is 44 and a half, and I'm, I'm looking at the Ravens catching the ball. Only one weird thing happened. I'm okay. Give me the over uh, every time there. I've got 46 points. Man. Yeah, the biggest mismatch this week is the Ravens offense versus this Cardinals. Oh, don't say that. Defense. What do you, why not say it? Their offensive line in Baltimore now that it's healthy is awesome, and this Cardinals defense, one of the worst in the league. Looks like we will not get Kyler Murray back in this game, but the Cardinals offense I think they can still put up 15 points, something like that, to get you over. Well, you had 20 points, so that's a pretty big – I have 30 to 17, 47 points, which is an over. I'm actually thinking that when I look at this Ravens offense, they could do it kind of all on their own, even though I do have the Cardinals scoring some points in this match. I have 34 to 20. But I watched those game scripts against the Lions, and that was a master class in figuring out how to start a game. So there, yeah, we got Greg and Cynthia to like points again. Uh, that was over under coming up. Oh, that was the saddest throw I've ever done. <laughs> Get a pen and a pad because we're dropping some knowledge on you that you need to document and store. Our week eight predictions are coming up next here on Game Day View. Get your game day started Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern with NFL Game Day Morning. I'm fine. I'm ready. It's my time. Yes, Michael, it is your time. Time to sit down with Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott as he prepares for a date with Aaron Donald. And Nick Sirianni, why doesn't everybody do the brotherly show? If everybody could do it, everybody would do it. 
Booch breaks down why this particular play is so unstoppable. Plus, with Halloween right around the corner, it's time for our annual Trick or Treat segment. And we're joined by several special guests as we celebrate NFL Network's 20th anniversary. All that and much more Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Looking forward to that. Let's get some big time predictions for week eight. It's time for write this down. What should the people take note of? Greg? They should take note of Devonta Smith. I've been waiting for the Slim Reaper to have a big game. This is going <laughs> to be it. over 52 receiving yards against the Commandos. I think it's going to be an <laughs> offensive shootout. Last time these two teams played, A.J. Brown basically got Emmanuel Forbes benched. Forbes isn't going to be playing in this game, but I think Devontae Smith's going to get the one-on-one -on -one matchups because all of the attention goes to A.J. Brown. And teams have really been trying to stop the Philly rushing game. That gives opportunity. Smith is too good not to go over 52. I like that one. I'm looking at MetLife Stadium, and I actually think, if you think the number is 70, just, just remember the number 70. Both Brees Hall and Saquon Barkley both going to have more than 70 rushing yards. Mm. However... Brees Hall is going to have more rushing yards than Saquon Barkley. Hear the word rushing in there, not scrimmage, rushing yards than Saquon Barkley. I, I'm going to take some rushing yards as well. I think somebody out there decided to set a number for Ramondre St Stevenson at th under 38 uh, rushing yards. I think Ramondre Stevenson will have 39 uh, <laughs> rushing yards or more. The Patriots rushing offense is bad, but the the Miami Dolphins' rush defense no. is not exactly something to, to write home about. Also, uh, if you want to write some stuff down, best Halloween candy, Cynthia, number one pick. Um, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Uh, I'm going to go Percy Pigs. I just brought brought him back from the UK. How about or re, Peanut Butter Cups? Oh, were you just trying to drop, an, like, you brought I, your That Percy was more of an answer for the kids. That's their favorites. They're going to be Thanks for watching. bringing us some Percy Pigs or whatever it is you just said. He actually, Sheesh. Did, he actually did bring some. For his kids. For his <laughs> for kids. kids. For his kids. You know? Wow. I'm getting, I'm getting discriminated against because I don't have any children. Ouch, Greg. That is the number one benefit of having children is people give you stuff <laughs> uh, to give to them. And we've. What about Gordy? Yeah, we'll, we'll get something for Gordy. Not necessarily we from the We still have time. I'm not an early buyer. So much uh, to look forward to in week eight. Thanks for watching this edition of Game Day View presented by Mercedes-Benz. We are so glad to be able to be back together and bring this show to you. We, we hope the picks go well. If you want to meme us, mm. we don't get mad. We don't get no, upset. No, we love it. it. It's fun. We appreciate it because trying to get every single game right is, is pretty difficult. Uh, for Cynthia and Greg, I'm Patrick Claybon. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching Game Day View.